Explain, a program that includes work by Greek, Rachmaninoff, and early 20th century Brazilian composer Villa Lobos. Then, for tomorrow night's late night prom, they'll be joined by jazz musicians for a program of more recent Brazilian classics by the likes of Gilberto Gil and Gitano Valeros. Here's how they were sounding in rehearsal earlier this evening. <laughs> Marin also with the Sound Palace Symphony Orchestra, what you're offering, I guess, might uh, uh, surprise some people. It just gives a far broader idea of the sort of music being played in Brazil at the moment. It's not just bossa, it's not just tropicalia. Um, what, what are you setting out to achieve with this problem? Well, we're trying to give a little bit of a, I think, an overview of Brazilian music over the last 120 years or so, and mostly the 20th century, and how popular music, like like it has in so many countries, really influenced the development and uh, growth of the politics and the entire country. And, and politics and music have always been intertwined in Brazil, haven't they? We think of Gilberto Gil or Zitano Veloso being forced into exile in the 60s. Right. Um, uh, your late night prom, the later one, when you bring on the jazz musicians, I mean, that 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 is reflecting some of that tension, some of the joy of that music, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's the idea of the late night, is really this overview of uh, popular Brazilian music. And, you know, I mean, when you think of, for me, being from the United States, you know, I think of uh, spirituals, and uh, that was music that, you know, kept a, an entire culture alive and was a method of protest and a method of communication. and. Much of Brazilian popular music has those similar threads throughout. Mm. And you joined Sao Paulo. You arrived there having come from Baltimore. I knew. I know you're still working with the Baltimore Orchestra. But of course, these are both cities with huge social problems, and and the orchestras are playing a large part. I know you developed that in Baltimore and doing the same thing in in Sao Paulo, taking the music out to to the community. How's that working? Well, I have to say that the, in Sao Paulo. The institution itself, the foundation that that um, really runs the orchestra, you know, it's very, very engaged in creating access and inclusion for as many citizens as possible. Over 60% of the concert tickets, for example, are given away. Because it's funded by the state of Sao Paulo, the orchestra can really be a community service kind of organization. We have a fantastic academy for young musicians. We have 45 young musicians that we're training, and most of them, almost 100% of them, go on to have positions um, in as 